All right. Well, welcome to everyone. This is our Fraction Face-Off Summer Math Intervention Session. We are glad to have everyone with us. Um, hope everyone is having a good day. We know it's a lot of rain out today. So we just want to begin by checking in with everyone. Let's see, huh? Maybe we're having issues here at Oakland School. Let me go back. Okay, here we go. Uh, okay. That I'm going to just go back for a second. Let's see if slide two. I am not sure what the issue is with slide two, um, but we just want to do a quick check in. So while we try to figure that out, and since we have such a small group right now, we want to take this time to have a quick warm opener. And this is really just an opportunity for us to connect with one another to check in on you, to see how you're doing. If you were with us yesterday, you got a chance to see um, this same warm opener, but we wanted to share it again to kind of model for you how you can use the same warm opener on different days at different moments because how a student might be feeling in one moment on a particular day might be very different than the day, the next day. So we wanna give you an opportunity to just check in with us. How are you feeling today? Um, how are things going for you? You take a look at all of our little Mr. Blobs or Mrs. Blobs and each one on that tree represents um, how someone might be feeling throughout a particular day or an emotion that might be swelling within them. So I wanna give you opportunity to kind of think about that and just respond in the chat. All right, so I see Sarah is a 14 today. Where is 14? Just holding on. Well, hold on, Sarah. We're going to try to get through this with you. Okay, Lindsay is at a nine. Where is my nine? Uh, oh, okay. All right, I see you. You kind of out here on the ledge. Okay, well, we're here with you and we'll provide support if you need it for sure. All right, Therese is, looks like feeling pretty good, hanging on in there, saying hi. Brianna's at a 10. Okay, we see you all, and we are glad to have you with us. We hope that you find our time together um, truly productive and helpful for your plans for this summer. Of course, we can call on everyone, so you can go through and check the your chat as well to kind of see how others are responding. But... As always, we want to make time and we want to model this for you so that you will make time to connect with your students, to give them an opportunity to share their voices um, and to connect with one another. And so this is our warm opener. And let's go to the next slide, Shauna. Thank you. So again, why do we do warm openers? We want to create a sense of belonging within our classrooms. And we know how important that can be for all students at all grade levels, right? All ages. Um, some people consider these to be welcoming rituals, right? And they can be facilitated in a multiple, in multiple different ways. But the goal is really to set the tone, to um, acknowledge each person who enters the room, to um, show them that their contribution is invited, it's wanted, that it's valuable, that it's important. We're gonna make it brief, but we want it to be interactive. And of course, it always provides an opportunity for you to build and connect with one another and or to connect to the learning. And we'll show you an example of that later on. All right, Shauna, I'll turn it over to you. All right, so much like we did yesterday, we're going to go through and talk a little bit about Fractions content knowledge. And then we're going to um, experience Fraction Faceoff as a student using some of the digital materials. And then we have the comparison from the actual teacher manual. So you'll get to look at parts of Fraction Faceoff as a one day of what the lesson looks like from the student workbook, as well as the teacher manual. If you don't have both of those parts yet, we will make sure and do that. Um, and then we'll talk about small steps for implementation. A couple things to know about Fraction Faceoff is it is heavily copyrighted and enforced by Vanderbilt. So there will be a big time legal agreement that it took weeks to negotiate between Oakland schools and Vanderbilt to make sure that you would have access to these materials. 
Um, they are not allowed to be posted on Google Drive. You are not allowed to resell them on TPT or to share parts of it out there. Um, the license does belong to Oakland schools and then given to your district. So if you were to leave, the expectation is that you would send everything back our way. Um, and we understand that you will use these in different classes and different settings, and that's absolutely okay. So whoever you want to use it with in your building kind of a thing would be less of an issue. But the digital piece is a big deal to them that the activities are not just published through Google Drive. Um, but if you have any questions on the copyright, let me know. Um, but really, it's just about someone else not taking the project and making money off of it. They had a real problem with TPT a couple of years ago. So now they are very cautious. So we're going to start off with a little bit of fun. I don't know how many of you are um, excited about Graham Fletcher. He is one of my favorite math um, teacher education people out there. So we're going to watch a few minutes about the progression of fractions and how that kind of builds from early L all the way through middle school. I'm going to switch screens here for a moment. And let me know if the sound's coming through, please. Fractions. <laughs> the very sound of the word, well, it kind of freaks most of us out. So here, I'm going to take a stab at explaining the progression of fractions. And it begins in first grade. And it starts with a crazy word, partition. And I think that students should be able to use that word as well. So in first grade, students should be able to partition squares and rectangles into halves and quarters, which can also be represented or called fourths. The vocabulary development here is the biggest piece in first grade. So they could also say a quarter of, a fourth of, or a half of. In second grade, students build on their understanding of halves, quarters, and fourths, and they're introduced to the idea of thirds. Again, they should be using that term thirds or a third of. When students leave second grade, a big piece of understanding they should leave with is though even though shapes can appear different, they actually can have the same size. So this brings us to third grade. It's a really big year for the development of fractions because here students are beginning to really truly develop that meaning of a fraction. And it's the first time that students see fractions written as a symbol. So even though we're talking about symbols, we really need to place our emphasis as teachers on the visual representation of fractions. So how can we do that? Well, one way we can do that is by creating a length model. Here you see that we've taken a strip of paper and folded it up into four parts. Another way, which isn't really explored in third grade, is the use of a set model. Here in this set model, you can see that three-fourths of the bears are green. And the last way that we can represent fractions is one that I think we're all pretty much familiar with, and that's the area model. Here, three-fourths of our square is yellow. As students are building this understanding, we need to make a connection back to their understanding of what they have with whole numbers. So just as whole numbers, take for example this number four, is built from units of one, fractions, in this case three-fourths, is built from three one-fourths, a fourth plus a fourth plus a fourth. Big understanding here. Let's go back to that length model. Well, that length model is a really powerful tool because it helps build students' understanding, which can also be done through a number line. Here's another number line. What number is the question mark? Here, let me help. Wait a minute, that's greater than one. Well, in third grade, students need to see that fractions can also represent numbers greater than one. It's the sum of unit fractions. So we might want to get students to begin counting with fractions, one-third, two-third, one, four-third, five-third, two. Let's get our students counting by fractions. Counting circles are a great tool to get students understanding and seeing the sum of unit fractions and that repetition and the structure of numbers. So as students begin to learn dividing in parts of a whole and partitioning up shapes, they begin to explore this idea of equivalent fractions. So here, we're going to take four lines and we're going to divide them up. We're going to partition them all into equal parts. And as we partition them all up into equal parts, we begin to see that, hey, 
some of these line up a little bit. Here, students are beginning to explore the idea of equivalent fractions. So one half is equal to two fourths, which is equal to three sixths, which is really the same as four eighths. The big piece here that students really need to see and we need to push and promote is that the size of the whole doesn't change, just the size of the parts do. But even though we're talking about fractions, students need to also understand that whole numbers can also be written as fractions. Take, for example, the number one. Here's three ways that we can represent that number one. As students begin to build that understanding and they continue to build their understanding, we compare fractions. Here, one quarter is greater than a half. Now you might be thinking I'm crazy, but I'm not. See, one quarter is, <laughs> yep, one quarter is greater than a half. It comes back to this understanding that students need to see that we have to be talking about the same size whole. So let's compare these two fractions, three fourths and five fourths. Well, here we see that a quarter is a rhombus. So if we have three one quarters, that's actually less than five one quarters. And that's a common denominator strategy. Another way we can compare fractions is, is if we have a common numerator. Here we have one as a common numerator. Yeah, common numerator, it doesn't quite sound right. But here students have this understanding and should be building this understanding of a common denominator and common numerator. Here students can see that one sixth is actually a smaller piece than one third and therefore it's less. So in fourth grade, we continue to build students understanding of comparing fractions. They come to us with this understanding of common denominators, common numerators, and here's another strategy students can use to compare seven eighths and 11 twelfths. Now they're both missing one part from a whole. But students know because of their understanding of a unit fraction that an eighth is actually larger than a twelfth and therefore it's farther away. It's missing a greater piece of its whole. And the last strategy we can use to compare fractions is with a benchmark. Here we'll use a benchmark of a half. Well, we know that four eighths is equal to a half and half of five is two and a half. Yep. We're not using any butterflies here, and butterflies have no place with comparing fractions. So we have four strategies for comparing fractions, but let's go back and revisit that idea of building equivalents. Well, here we have a half, and if we take our half and we multiply it by two by dividing it, we can actually see that two fourths is the same as a half. And if we repeat that procedure, we see that we have four eighths. Here, this area model helps students visually see equivalent fractions. Now, after students have explored with fractions lots of times, they begin to see this, this pattern in numbers. And I think it's our job as the teacher to kind of allow them to see this. So students begin to see that whatever we do to the numerator, we do to the denominator. But I think that it's important that kids come up with that understanding, not just us telling them. There's a whole bunch happening here in this crazy world of fractions. All right, we're gonna give you a couple minutes to talk in your breakout rooms for today. Go ahead and introduce yourselves because you're gonna be with each other until six o'clock tonight. Um, if you need to have your camera off because there's things going on at home or you're eating dinner, just share that with your group. And you're gonna talk a little bit about the progression of fractions. How does that square up with the kids that you see and the instruction that's happening in your district? Do we have a good sense of what's going on compared to what Graham said? Okay, so introductions and then comparing your district system vertically with how fractions are instructed. And off you go. Stephanie or Megan, do I, oh, Megan, do you need some help moving? There we go. His videos are so good. Yeah, that's great. And you know, grade, like none of the second graders I know would have understood that the triangle was equal to the square. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Great. So, yeah. Um, 
I get his video, his um, email sometimes, but I hadn't really taken a look at it because I don't know why when I see Graham, I'm thinking about the gentleman who was over, oh, what was it? Something for Blueprint. Do you remember that? No, didn't deal with him. Okay. He's so so that's really approachable. He wrote the recent um, fact fluency modules or that intervention oh, wow. box that people are buying. Okay, he's beautiful. big in Georgia. Okay. Um, and he's got a couple videos. There's one on like addition and subtraction and mm -hmm. it just awesome. like, oh, this makes sense. Yeah. I'm going to pop in on some rooms and okay I'll do the know. same where are you where are you going uh I'll stay with even today okay I'll go to add I think okay we may have to make a whole nother video sorry about that Shauna. no that's me mm -hmm. I forgot to no you can't do everything all right so our fraction format will be word problem, training as a group, collaborative problem solving, an individual activity with lots of opportunities to respond. The individual contest gives you additional problems so that you can target students to see how they're actually holding on to that learning. And then the scoreboard is a way of increasing motivation and offering some rewards that are just not intrinsic. And Eurisha is going to start us off with a warm opener. Okay, so just like we mentioned yesterday, um, for those of you who are there, um, with our warm openers, they can be really focused on our social emotional learning, and they can also be more content focused, but also still supporting those SEL competencies. So this warm opener is today's number, and it's a great activity because all students can engage. Um, it's going to support you in um, building your students' number sense, and it also gives um, you an opportunity for students to make decisions. So it's going to support them in that space as well. Um, and so the way it works is we get to represent represent today's number in, in as many different ways as possible. And because we know so many people are going to be working in an online or digital space for this summer or perhaps for next year, we wanted to model that in that space today. So we'll see how this goes. So you all have access to the Jamboard. And in the Jamboard, you'll see that you can draw. You'll see you can use post-it notes, but there's also shapes available. Yep, you can add in pictures if you want it. Um, and then there are also shapes available to the side as well that you're able to lean into. Yep, so you can choose pictures. Um, go over to the side for me, Shauna. Do you see that circle? That's there? Down, down. Yep, right there. Mm -hmm. Click on that. Yep, so it's a lot of different shapes if you chose to use any of those as well. But we want you to represent three-fourths in as many different ways that you can. I'm gonna ask that you choose your own frame. So there are 20 different frames in here. You can choose one you would like to work on. And then just go ahead and start putting some of your ideas. We're gonna give you just a minute or two to work independently. And then we're gonna allow us all to make some connections to um, what others have um, put on their jam board. So I'm gonna just give you a moment, come up with as many ideas as you choose. And we're gonna go ahead and start looking at some of the things you're including. And if there's anybody having any issues with the jam board, let me know. Good. And yes, you can use words, you can use those shapes, you can use tally marks, images, whatever you choose.
So if you were in your classroom with your students, you might have them then pair up and share the work that they've done. So all of the different ways that they've represented three-fourths. Um, because we're a little short for time, we wanna make sure you have enough time to really dig into the intervention uh, resources. We are going to just look whole group at the frame. So I wanna give you an opportunity right now, take a look at how others have represented three-fourths. Want you to notice some of the representations that are similar to the one that you created. And then also we want you to name if you see something that is different. Perhaps someone thought about a representation that you didn't consider. If there's a representation you see that you don't understand, you would also provide space for that. So we would give you opportunity to name that. You see one you've never seen before, it's different, you don't quite understand it. We would make time to allow you to share that. Okay, so I'm seeing several different examples. And again, today we're a little shorter on time, so, but I will stop for a moment. Does anyone see an example that they're, that's unfamiliar to them? They've never seen before, they have questions about, they have wonderings about. Okay, most likely your students would. And so you would give them space to acknowledge that. Additionally, we would like to capture student thinking. So um, after you have had students share out their different representations, so we would take some time. We have them all here on the frame, but in your classroom with your students, you would allow folks to share out their representations and capture all of the different approaches or ideas in one space. So if we go back to the very first one, Shauna, would you go back to your first slide for us? And I think we have many of the examples in this space, perhaps not all. You might wanna capture them all and then leave them up in your room and it can serve as an anchor chart for all of your students throughout the year. You can continue to build on it Perhaps there's a representation that's not here now, but as you all continue um, throughout the year in your learning, that you could add on to it to support your students' thinking. Teresa gave a shout out to whoever did the diamond. Ah. I think of a baseball diamond. So nice. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Don't know what happened to it, but it was there. Yikes. All right. Well, digital. All right. Yes. All right, All so right. I'm going to go ahead and Thank invite you. you to join the slideshow. I'm hoping it is in like sharing mode. Yep, it looks like we're good. Okay. And you do need editing rights for doing some of the activities. So just like we explained a few moments ago, every single lesson, um, and there are 35 lessons, I believe, in this one, mm -hmm. um, each lesson will be talked about as a day. We tried to use inclusive clip art so that um, it represents a wide variety of students. And what you're seeing here are some of the teaching charts. So in your handy dandy tote bag, you will get these little cards that are supposed to help you with the teaching strategies. So what we did whenever possible is we included the teaching charts right on the slides. So you don't have to go between the student book and the teacher manual, which are two completely separate giant PDFs of more than like 300 pages. So we tried to make it as easy for you to work with as possible and asking students to read the problem and then to decide if it's a splitting problem or a grouping problem. And then trying to decide what things we know. Do we know the units? Do we know the size? 
Do we know the types of items? Do we know the size? Making a table and solving the problem. This is consistent with the IES and the What Works Clearinghouse best practices for elementary and middle school intervention that we want to have students noticing the type of word problem instead of having them focus on keywords. So we're really trying to um, move things backwards. Um, yep, you can do that, Teresa. Yep, all right. Um, so I'm giving you an example of the word problem warm up, and there's a little bit of workspace there. And these items are also draggable. So as you're looking, you're able to kind of say, okay, so what would we do when we read this problem? So go ahead and read our problem there. Do we have a question? What question could we ask or what question could we answer with the information we have? What does one have eight come? Absolutely. So we could make that into a number sentence and asking them to apply what they know. Do we agree that Alex needs eight cups of M&Ms? Will that be enough? That's always a tough question for kids. And we're working on a daily basis of starting with that word problem so that they are seeing fractions in how they might be applied. So you'll see lots of things about cutting, th cutting fruit and making recipes and trying to find ways where those word problems will be um, addressed and connected to the fractions idea. They also give you strategies for how to deal with distracting information. Um, moving on. In some of the early lessons, they do have examples of reviewing fraction vocabulary. Um, we know that again, one of the six recommendations is that we explicitly instruct kids on vocabulary. So we have a drag and drop activity where they're able to read the prompts on the left and drag the pieces on the right. Um, so what we're looking for here is if you would join by your breakout group number, you can join a slide for your group. So there are four breakout group numbers. If you have any question on which breakout room you were in, let me know. Room one was Megan, Regina. Room two was Christy and Sarah. Room three are all the Stephanies. And room four is Colleen, Lindsay, and Therese. So you can go to the slide that applies to your room. And you can go ahead and drag and drop some of those to match up the prompt with the vocabulary. How are we helping kids to remember what these um, concepts mean? So we'll give you a couple minutes. Go ahead. You are taking these pieces and dragging them to the matching section. So you're picking up the whole thing and dragging and dropping. Did anyone need help with their breakout group? Hi, Anybody? I'm Teresa. And yeah, I was yeah. with Stephanie's before, but I think because I got, I had to rejoin via my computer, sure. my name didn't show up. You're in four. So you're going to uh, that nope, fourth that's Teresa. Oh, no. oh. Teresa okay. will put back in room three. Sorry okay. about that. Okay. And Brianna, I'm going to add you to room two. We had some people in and out a little bit. Sorry about yeah. that. And I'm not in a room. <clears throat> Who's that? I didn't see the join come up on my computer. Yeah. Oh, no, we're, really all, we're all working together in the moment in the slideshow. I can put mm -hmm. you in breakout rooms. Let's do that. So oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> I, can't find the, I cannot find the slideshow. Did you send it to us? I put it in chat for you. We didn't want to have too many links in the email. Did you want me to put the link in chat again? Yeah, unfortunately, yeah. I don't have the link because of. There you go. Yeah, okay. No okay. There you go. And we are okay. going to put you in breakout rooms. That way you can complete this activity oh. in a small group. That was a great idea. I did it. <laughs> <laughs> Works out oh, awesome. All right, off you go. All 
All right, um, just kind of collecting you back together. When you look at this in your teacher manual, or if you look at this in the student manual, this will be a pencil and paper activity where they will have a word bank at the top of the page. And then they'll be matching up those definitions day after day to make sure students really understand the vocabulary that we're using. So this is really a very explicit way of teaching the vocabulary to make sure students have those basic understandings. When we get into the second part of the lesson, this is the training part. This is where we're actually doing instruction. So again, we took the information on the little teaching cards and there were two cards that they wanted you to use in this lesson. One is the compare card. And if both denominators are different, this is what we need to do. And we're looking at are the, do they have the same denominators? Do they have the same numerators? And it kind of helps to teach them what to notice about fractions. So we're becoming more proficient over time at deciding what we are thinking when we're comparing numbers. So if you look at that top left example, um, right up here, what do you notice about those two fractions? When you compare, do they have the same denominators? Thumbs up or thumbs down? Shauna, are you, are you supposed to be sharing a screen with us? Oh, shoot, yes. You guys just said digital is now painful and I'm living it. There we go. I'm sorry about that. All right. So looking at the next part of the lesson, this is the training part of the lesson. And this is where we're actually giving students new content. So they have the teaching cards for you. And you would also have a pencil and paper version of this from the student workbook. We digitized all of the activities. And this is an example of one of the training lessons from day six. And you'll see what part of the lesson it is always listed in the bottom right corner. And then you'll see what day we pulled that lesson from. And in this case, we pulled it from day six, which is pretty early in the intervention. So we're asking students to compare fractions. And so we want them to think about same denominator. And what does it mean if they have a bigger numerator or if it's a bigger fraction? If they have the same numerators, there are fewer parts and which one is the bigger fraction? So looking at this fraction up here, do we have the same denominators? Thumbs up or thumbs down? Okay, do we have the same numerator? Yes. So if we have the same numerator, how can we decide whether the fraction on the left is greater than, less than, or equal to? And you have an endless number of counters there so kids can continue to drag and think. Who wants to walk me through this problem? So we want kids to be able to compare. Stephanie, go ahead and unmute. Um, the fraction with the larger denominator has a smaller overall value and the numerators are the same because it's divided into more parts. So each part is smaller. Yes, yeah, so we both have, we have three one tenths and we have three one sixths, but we know that those one sixth pieces are bigger. We also have some virtual manipulatives if you want to compare it with the whole. And you would also be able to drag these pieces and compare. So if I have three sixths, how do they compare to three tenths? And really trying to give kids the visual of the number line, as well as the pieces that they can work with. So in this case, you said that three tenths is less than three sixths. So if you were doing these um, with pencil and paper, they have little tokens in your bag. And if you like materials, this is gonna be heaven for you. There are little things that you can compare and all these pieces. You will also have a whole gob of bags with foam pieces in there. And because Oakland Schools is not a fan of the foam because it just doesn't hold up, we are also going to purchase for you some fraction bars and fraction circles that are plastic. So they're easily disinfected. You could put them in the dishwasher in a mesh um, bag um, because we know that while the paper is nice, it's not gonna hold up. And I don't know what you're gonna do about all the Ziploc bags, but good, good wishes are coming your way. So if you wanted to take a couple minutes, we'll put you back in breakout rooms and you can play around with the digital version of the training lesson. You've got these two cards that are your teacher cards that kind of guide you through the questions. 
And we can even think about, is that one of these fractions equivalent to one half? What would have been your answer here? Are one of these um, fractions equivalent to one half? Yeah, one of them is. So, and we're able to say that three six is equal to one half. So is three tenths more or less than one half? Less. So now we're able to help kids make the connection in a couple different ways. Either we were able to take it down to a unit fraction, or we were able to think about how big the pieces of pie are comparison wise, or we can use the comparison to the one half as a benchmark strategy. So they're trying to give kids lots of ways of in, um, creating that mental image of the fraction, as well as how they're going to play out those activities. So we'll give you a few minutes. If you are in breakout room one, you're gonna work on slide 15. Breakout room two is on slide 16, and then 17 and 18 for rooms three and four. And we'll give you a couple minutes just to kind of play around with the digital version. And then towards the end of our time today, you're gonna to get to see the paper version. So you can decide what's a good batch for you and your students. And off you go, hopefully. All right, welcome back folks. Do we have a couple people still out or is everyone back? Yep, we should be good. Okay, so hopefully we're able to see how we might teach students um, some of the new concepts and getting them to practice using the comparison ideas, same numerator, same denominator, and then benchmark fractions. So those are a lot of pieces that I know when I was teaching, we did not spend much time on comparing fractions. We just kind of like flew by it and said, yep, now you know, right? Off we go. Or we took a day or two when we made fraction strips. And depending on how good the kids find motor skills are, they were either accurate or not accurate. So hopefully these will give you different ways of having those conversations with students. The next section is actually an activity that mirrors one of your card decks. So in the kit, there are a number of these card decks. So they will be um, comparing flashcards or even just which fraction is bigger. So we took this and there's an entire slide deck that you will get um, access to. This promotes the idea of lots of opportunities to respond. And I'm not gonna run it in present mode now because of how my computer's configured at the moment, but we can still play. It's also a little weird on Zoom because depending if your image is reversed, it might look like you have the wrong answer. Don't worry, live with kids, it's much easier to do. So we're looking for same or different. Is the computer, is the fraction greater than, less than, or equal to? And we're gonna add in those hand gestures. And this is a fraction sprint activity because we have lots of opportunities to respond. And as a teacher, you can decide with your kids if you want to do it on the cards, which are already printed and they're all going to be in a Ziploc bag ready to go. And the bag will even tell you that these cards are used day 16 through 22, 21. So there will be a little bit of information um, so that you know when to use those. But we did create a digital version. So let's go ahead and play. All right, which fraction is bigger? Go ahead and gesture for me. And we need greater than, less than, or equal to. And if you're like me in the moment, you don't want to think about it. So when you're using this in present mode, you can just click again and the answer will be revealed. So I don't know about you. I just like in the moment, I hate trying to think. So we, we took care of that for you. All right, greater than, less than, or equal to. Beautiful. Greater than, less than, or equal to. Beautiful. Greater than, less than, or equal to. Beautiful. Greater than, less than, or equal to. What strategy are we using here? What strategy did you use? Go ahead and tell me how you were thinking about it. Therese, what strategy did you use? I compared the, the bottom, like six to uh, smaller pieces because it's the larger number and I just compared to num the numerators. Beautiful. So equal so to this is a same numerator and then you thought about how big those pieces would be. 
Yes, that's the yep, that's the official way to say it. Yep. <laughs> Christy, you used a different strategy. What was your strategy? Um, I just noticed um, immediately jumps out at me the half, and so then I knew three quarters was more than half. So I did. I, did the, I noticed the threes in the numerator. I noticed the one half. Yes, and we really want kids to notice that. How did you decide? Because it's not enough to be right. Because it could have just been lucky. I mean, there's only three choices here, people, and the equal one's pretty obvious. So we want to really highlight for kids, oh, wait a minute, I see a number that's the same. So then how do I compare those bottom numbers? And that's a big moment, Therese, for you to be able to say, I know the sixths are smaller. So how do I make that comparison then? How do I make sense of that? And that will trip up a lot of kids. So we've got lots of opportunities to respond. We have an opportunity to share our strategy and we can hook it back to those training lessons. What were we talking about it? Same numerator, same denominator, or do we have something that's going on compared to one half or one? Stephanie, what's his name? Ziggy. <laughs> Iggy will be on YouTube later. <laughs> Ziggy with the Z. Oh, Ziggy. Thank you. All right. Yeah, we're going to give him proper got... credit in the YouTube video. <laughs> yeah, he's he's only a year old. <laughs> All right. Um, and last one. Greater than, less than, or equal to? Beautiful. And what strategy did you use, Lindsay? Um, common denominators, so we can compare the numerators. Nice. So you know that you have fourths, which one had more. Did anyone use another strategy? I knew uh, that four, oh, sorry. I knew that four fourths was equal to one. And three fourths is a proper fraction. So it is definitely less than one, beautiful. And we want kids to share those ideas. We could also take a moment if we had some kids and we could put these on a number line. Um, one of the things that we will send along if you want them are some empty number lines that work with dry erase. So kids would be able to go ahead and explain where would these be on a number line? And just the fact if they show you that their number line is proportional tells you where they are in their understanding of fractions. So I love this one. If we need to, we will order lots of these. All right, another example of the fraction sprints are this activity. And you again can use the cards. There's another bag here somewhere with cards on it. And you're saying, are they equal or not equal to one half? And you actually use this deck two different ways throughout the 36 days of intervention. In the first time they come around, you're actually asking kids to correctly read the fraction or to correctly name the fraction. And then later in the days, you are actually gonna get ready to gesture and say if the fraction is equal to one half or not equal to one half. We really want kids to have that um, strength and confidence that they know that part. So I'm going to use the flippity link and I'm gonna go there for a moment. All right, so when you get to flippity, um, there are different activities that you can do based on the fractions. So you could do the naming side. So does someone want to read that fraction for me? Um, Brianna, oh, Brianna might have her hands full. Regina, next one. Can you read the fraction for me? Oh, unmute. Nine twelfths. Beautiful. And we are going to show students different ways of saying that. Nine of 12 equal parts, nine twelfths and then the representation. So they're able to see all those ways together. But right now we're just playing equal to one half or not equal to one half. So we've got equal to and not. Beautiful. Uh, oh, by the way, you can shuffle the cards up here. All right, ready, equal to or not equal? Not equal. And what would it be if it were equal? Who could change my fraction to make it equal to one half? Lindsay, so you would change the numerator to four. Beautiful way to extend that activity. Equal or not equal? Not equal, beautiful. Equal or not equal? Beautiful. So the idea of fraction sprints is lots of opportunities to respond. And as the teacher, you'll now have access to the digital version, which are all set up in Google Slides 
or you will have the card version, which are gonna be included with your kit. And then using those extension questions to make sure kids can explain what would it look like if it were equal to one half? And how can we talk about that? This is also another good connection for the number line that if we would have multiple number lines, they would all stack on top of each other. Or if you go back to this representation that we had earlier, we can see that there's more than one way to get to a half. We see one half, we see three sixths, we see four eighths, we see one tenth or five tenths. And you can actually drag the ruler up on top. Let me move that to the front. You can move that to the front and have students compare. So those were all designed to be mathematically accurate if I were to line them up correctly. So students can see what makes one half. And they could also then compare to see what it would take to build something that is more than one half. So you're seeing a couple examples of fraction sprints, and that was equal or not equal. And then this is an activity of a relay. This is where we would have students working in groups together to solve the problems collaboratively. There are a couple different kinds of problems that you'll see again and again in the workbook. And so the first one are when you have three fractions and you're ordering them from least to greatest, we have a number line example here, and you're actually going to pick this up by clicking on it. And then when you see the little cross hatch, when it looks double cross, you're able to drag it over to the number line wherever you think it fits, and you'll just drop it there. There's a little arrow to help you be really precise. We love that math practice. And then we have a couple examples from our earlier um, training part of our lesson, where we're asking students to think about same numerator, same denominator, comparison to benchmark. So we'll give you a couple minutes that you're going to work collaboratively on the relay. And this is a chance to kind of practice those skills and talk about it. And we'll give you a few minutes to work in your breakout rooms. Um, if you are breakout room one, you're on slide 27. Breakout room two, it doesn't say two, but you're on 28. And then breakout room three is 29 and then 30. All right. Off you go, we'll give you a chance to play with those. Did that leaves someone, nope, it worked out good. And let me, all right, welcome back. How did that feel as a student? What were you thinking about? Did you think about any of the strategies that we were talking about? Same numerator, same denominator, benchmark. Which of the activities did you enjoy or which one did you find challenging? Who's willing to share? One thing, I'll share something. Um, one thing that we talked about is with like the hand gestures and those pieces, how that seems to be a great strategy and even generalizing into different things. So matching the visual with what you're doing, you know, half, it's equal and <laughs> things like that. Nice, I appreciate you mentioning the gestures. That's one of my favorite things that we can do to give kids an opportunity to respond and to build in a brain body connection yes. with what we're talking about. It's hard to check out if everyone else in class is busy making a sign. All right, somebody else. Um, Lindsay, go ahead and talk about how you guys ordered fractions. Yeah, so um, we realized that we had to compare the fractions to one another before we could order them, not only in a list, but on a number line. Um, so for example, we were looking at seven tenths and one half, and then one half and nine tenths. Oh, okay, both of those are bigger than one half. So we know that one half has to go first in the list. It's the smallest. Nice. Did anyone notice the connection between this activity up here and this one down here? What did you notice? We noticed that the way that they are 
ordered from least to greatest, you look at half and you automatically know that seven tenths is going to be next. It's a great correlation. And I, I was telling us, telling my group, like when we do fractions on a normal line, my kids struggle. So I really like the way that you compare them first. I've not done that before. And then once you put them from least to greatest, then you're able to just quickly plot them on the line once you have that benchmark of one half. And so that was pretty cool. Absolutely. So what they did here was some really cool scaffolding that I didn't appreciate when I first started looking at this. I don't know, and it, maybe it's in the written manual because I, again, no details. I did not read the whole manual. Um, so hopefully you're better than me. So over here, we compared two fractions at a time. Once we compared the fractions, then we put them in order from least to greatest. Then we actually took them and put on a, a number line, but now it just wasn't putting them in order. It also had to be proportional. So if we had just put, and you will notice that kids will start doing it this way in the beginning, is they will put seven tenths right here, and then they will put nine tenths right here because up above, the numbers were just equally spaced. So then it's a really cool moment to go, okay, so where would we put six tenths? Does that make sense? And then what number would go here? Is our spacing correct? Is it mathematically precise? And that's a moment where initially you want that confidence. Yep, it is totally right. You're like, okay, so we would do six, seven, eight, nine, Oh, wait a minute, why is that such a big gap in there? Do we really want nine there? Or how can we make it be more exact? And this is again why I like this empty number line, because kids have to make it proportional. Does it make sense mathematically? Not just that they're in the right order, but where do they need to be placed? So I think some of these activities are kind of exciting. Um, after the relay, which is again, collaborative solving that we work together to help each other, then we're gonna look at those same concepts, but now this would be an individual contest. And just for the sake of time, we're not going to have you do it as an individual contest, but I did wanna show you that the circles, you're gonna drag down to say that these are equal to one half. And there's no magic to the colors here. We just wanted to give you options um, so that kids would be able to do this. If you're doing it individually with kids in you, your classroom and you want to um, have them all in the same slide deck so you can watch their progress, you can click on the left slide here and you're just going to hit control D and you can make as many copies as you want. It's also a really nice way if you want to go back in the version history and you can actually restore it to the very first part of the lesson so that you don't have to clean up all your slides. I don't know about you, but like cleaning up digital activities is like a thankless task. So use that version history or always create one extra of the master so that you don't have to recreate these each time. Um, you can also, I included a text box on here so that kids would be able to type their name so that you could watch which kids are making progress or which kids might need to pop in and talk to them. Um, some teachers are using these on the smart board because then they can just do it all together. Kids can drag the pieces together or they can write using the smart board, which is absolutely fine as well. So again, you're able to tell individual contest slides when you make the copy of the whole intervention slide deck, you'll see these little prompts to let you know what part of the lesson. Every individual contest on the slide deck has an orange background. Every relay has a yellow background. You'll also see the lesson number in the bottom right corner, so you can correlate that with what's in your teacher manual. Um, we also have examples of the scoreboard. So these are the ones that if you're going to use um, a classroom economy, which can be fun, it's summer, something needs to be fun, that you would have the quarter dollars and the big dollars. I took a different approach and I actually used little quarters, but the quarters will line up on the dollars so you could pay kids. And you could kind of keep a running total of how much um, fraction cash they have going and then offer prizes or incentives if they get to a certain point. Maybe you want to have something collaborative where they can throw all their money in and you buy a pizza. Um, but whatever it is, we do have the option to build on that motivation. 
And yes, we love intrinsic motivation, but I don't know about you. My kids were not intrinsically motivated very often. So sometimes, and you know what? I show up at work because someone pays me. I don't know that it's a bad thing. <laughs> um, what are some other things that you do to make sure that kids are feeling motivated? Does anyone have some other surefire things for summer or even during the school year? I give out raffle tickets if kids are doing um, something extraordinary or out of the norm. And I do a raffle. I usually do it every few weeks. And I give like free homework passes or uh, I used to bring in food, but with COVID you can't. So just things like that. They can choose different options. There's different things out, out of a prize box. And they usually do the free homework pass, <laughs> which is free. <laughs> but you know what? If it's motivating, then you've absolutely got the right combination. Um, Lindsay, you've got raffle tickets too? Yes, I pretty much do the exact same thing as Therese when I taught special ed. Dog dollars, because my school mascot is a bull dog. Um, we had these dog dollars that we used as a building. Weekly raffle, um, prizes include popcorn, candy, homework pass, no shoes pass, teacher's chair, you know, trying more, more um, prizes that are free of cost to me. <laughs> Always <laughs> that I don't thing. have to purchase. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and we did make it sure that they're mathematically accurate. So two quarters actually make a half dollar. So you have lots of options there for matching those pieces up. Um, I will be honest, most people did not use the digital scoreboard. They thought it was too hard to maintain, but we wanted to give you a way of doing it digitally, especially last summer when face-to-face -face really wasn't an option. There are also, if you pull off to the right, there are additional monies over there already created, so you have lots of them. You don't have to worry about it. But again, the same thing, if you were to highlight it and click Control D, you can just make more dollars. But there's actually a big stack of them here already created for you. Questions on scoreboard. Okay, scoreboard is actually the last part of the lesson piece. But we want you to compare the experience that you just had digitally with what you've got on paper or on the little stick drive. So we have two links to share with you. This is actually lesson 16 from the student workbook. And I just pulled out the three pages of PDF so you can see the word problem. You can see what the relay looked like compared to the slide deck. And so this is what the student would have had. The individual contest where you had those three activities going. And then we're also giving you the link to the teacher pages. And when you look at the teacher pages, they tell you all the materials you need. These little cards are actually designated here. So it says C1. Of course, I'm not gonna have C1 ready for you. But, oh, there we go. All right, so it told you to have C1. So the little laminated card and have that handy when you're teaching this lesson. And then there's another teaching card, NL1. So you're gonna collect your cards. You're gonna look at your materials list. Here's the information for the word problem. And I picked an awful lesson by the way, because that says word problem that doesn't need to be solved, but that's okay. Um, nothing's perfect. And then I'm going to find out why all the pages aren't here. I'm only seeing one page. Give me just a moment to pull it and go ahead and talk about the individual student pages first. And then I'll put that link in for the other one. So I'm not seeing why it's not just one page. So I apologize. All right, we're gonna start off in a breakout room talking about the student version of the lesson compared to the activities that we offer digitally. And then we'll have you come back and I will have the teacher pages ready to go. All right, in your breakout room talking about digital student version um, versus paper student version. All right, so what did you notice between the digital version of the slides and the activities and the student workbook? Which would you choose? Are there certain activities that you liked better one way or the other? Um, I tend to like 
the paper and pencil because we don't have very secure computers. Okay. So if I'm not watching like all the their computers, then they're constantly going on like wrong sites. And then younger kids are just moving stuff around and not actually like paying attention. Also to have the, you know, data from it on a piece of paper for IEP stuff. But I like the um, digital to do like whole group or, you know, um, if I'm working with a group, then two kids can go up and use that by themselves and I can watch them. So I like both, but the paper copy is safer at this point. And that's what Eurisha and I really strive for is that as the teacher, when you're thinking about teacher, content, and student, you are the expert. You're the one making those decisions. So we want to have both options available to you so that you can pick and choose what's a good match. Lindsay, you were saying that you would only print part of it? Yeah, um, just looking at this, I, I guess I maybe it's just because I'm kind of confused how to use the second page, like the the relay stuff. I, I, I guess I just need more um, practice with what that looks like. The individual contest, I look, looked at that right away and said, oh, that's basically your independent practice page. I would print that off, give that, you know, at the end of the lesson. So I guess I just need more experience with that second page and how that would work if I were to use it paper and pencil. Absolutely. Anybody else, which parts you liked? And which would you use, the digital sprints, like some of the flippity or the one where we were doing the gestures, or would you use the cards? We played a couple different versions. In some cases, you would see a fraction, and then you'd have to say the benchmark. In some cases, you're doing the compare. Um, are we talking same numerator, same denominator? So Sarah, you would use the slideshows or flippity. Uh, Therese, you're going to print the individual contest. That's what Laura, um, Lindsay was talking about doing. And just knowing you have options. There are times when having a set of cards is super easy. You don't have to boot up your computer. You don't need the computer screen working. If the internet is slow, there are a lot of reasons just to use the card sets. And then just remember each bag is labeled with what days you would use that lesson. So it may be worth it to you to go through and find the bags that are most useful or the card sets that you're really comfortable with so that you have those ready. I do wanna take just a minute and show you how detailed the teacher manual is. So it is actually 10 pages. I'm gonna put that link in chat. And we are opening up a 10 page document, not that one, there we go. So we talked about this um, for just a moment where you have the teaching cards that it wants you to gather and all of your teaching cards are on the ring. It will talk about how to do the warm up. And it will actually script it out for you. So if you're someone who likes to have the questions kind of thought out and how you might engage students, you will really like this. If you are me and you rather just teach by the seat of your pants, this is going to be a lot to look at. Um, but I like the fact that it's there. So if I have a question, like I should have looked at the word problem to find out that they gave us an unsolvable word problem. What a crap example. I would not have used this one. I don't know about you, my kids don't have time for problems that are not solvable. Like that would have been really hard for my students. But it talks to the training activity. Um, we did not talk about the doubling rule. Maybe that was an opportunity that we should have talked about. Um, so this will give you a lot of detail. And then it will tell you how to get students engaged in the relay activity. And I think that was somebody's question just a moment ago. Yeah, Teresa for subs or paras, this is super explicit. And so, I mean, you look at this, there are pages and pages. So we'll give you a minute to look through the um, teacher guide just for this one day of lessons, and then a few minutes to talk about it in your group. What do you think of having fully scripted lesson plans? How do they fit with your teaching? When would you use them? And maybe it's not something you need but go ahead and talk through the advantages and disadvantages of using the full lesson plans and then paper versus digital. And off you go. All right, folks, welcome back. 
Um, just some real quick feedback. How are you feeling about using the digital parts of the lessons? You will have all of these linked into the slideshow. And let me show you where to find everything. If you go to our Padlet, everything that Oakland Schools has created is in this left column. So you're gonna make a copy of the slideshow. So it's yours to do with as you want. Anytime you want to, you can just come back and download a fresh copy if you want to. Um, so no worries that you'd be messing it up for anybody else or that if you customize it to your needs, that it would change it for anybody. Um, you, oops, sorry, correction, face off. And just that reminder um, of the license that we don't wanna share or post those. But quite honestly, um, even talking to the Fuchs, who are the researchers at Vanderbilt, you can use these within your building. So if you have a building team and you wanna share these across, that's absolutely lovely. They're really worried about the digital sharing. So be confident in that. And then you can also make that copy of the Google Slides. In the Google Slideshow, you will have the link to Flippity, you'll have the link to the comparison activity, and then all the digitized activities. Um, so a little bit of an impression. How are you feeling confidence-wise in using the digital tools for Fraction Faceoff? Um, zero to five, fist to five, either way. Five if you're feeling totally ready to go, like bring on summer school. Okay. And if you are a person who really likes to dive in, you might wanna take time and look through the manual. Um, it does take a while to sort of orient yourself because it's very wordy. Um, I know a lot of people who like it are using lots of tabs and post-its to sort of make themselves notes. And I think Christy, it was your room that was kind of talking about liking having the questions out there. Coming up with questions is really hard when you're first teaching. Yeah. Um, any other comments on using digital or paper? what can you can you specify what are we getting like in person like what if they we haven't already gotten it what we're getting so we know what to print off and whatnot yeah don't print anything okay. because we ordered all of this stuff so you so, will get the tote bag and you will get the manual and you will get the legal agreement um so you won't need to do anything we are also ordering okay. additional supplies because the baggy of foam stuff is just not my jam. So you will have these, but we're gonna send you nicer ones to use with kids. Now, I mean, I always have this like, so if we were to move to another district, um, we still have the rights to this training? Yes. Okay. The district like, should do, do we keep the book? Does the school keep the book? Like, you know, like, I don't know. Yeah, technically <laughs> Oakland Schools owns the books. Hopefully you're staying somewhere in the county and we still love you and you can, because it would be really hard to do this without the training. So thank you. Nope, absolutely. And you do get all the card sets. These are also in PDF form on that drive that you were given. So you could print all of these, but no need. We, we ordered all the goodies. And then if you like the number lines, we'll order you some number lines with whiteboard markers. These are one of my favorite things ever from kindergarten all the way up. Just really, really good until kids are on the coordinate plane. So awesome tool. All right. Um, thumbs up if you know where to get your Google Slides for Pirate Math or for Fraction Face Off. Beautiful. Um, we will be sending emails to confirm whether or not you already received the manual. And then we'll tell you when we're sending out the tote bag so it doesn't get lost somewhere in translation. Yep, and then everything is linked in the Padlet. If you wanna just, I can tell you now. I don't know if you wanna tally so you don't have to email me. Nope, email, because I have Got to it. copy the person who's gonna be doing the sending. Yep. Oh, gotcha. Yep, okay. No problem. Um, but we are going to close our lesson, which all of the openers and closers are built right into the slide deck. We also included some visual activities like same but different using lots of fraction prompts. So we'll talk about those a little bit too, but I do wanna give Eurisha time to really dedicate to how we have a hopeful closure. Okay, thank you, Shauna. So um, as Shauna mentioned, we wanna be intentional about how we end each day, which I know can get really difficult, but there is a, a lot of value in being able to end in an intentional way where you are setting the tone for that next interaction. 
such that kids are looking forward to coming back. And so the hopeful ending provides an opportunity for you to do that. It also gives you that time and space for reflection, reflecting on the day. Um, it can also be an opportunity for kids to just be vulnerable about where they are, right? So we get to reflect on the learning. We also get to reflect on how we engage. And so this particular hopeful ending is called One Minute Accolades. And this one specifically is something great about today. We have another one, you may have seen it, that was like better each day, right? Where we get to reflect on how we might improve. This one gives you an opportunity to center um, but yep, we'll stay at this one. Thank you, Shauna. This one gives you an opportunity to center and affirm what you've done well or what you found joyful, which is important, particularly when you're engaging in challenging, um, challenging academic experiences. And we know fractions can be that for many kids, right? We know adults who, if you mention fractions, they run from you. So we definitely want to be intentional about creating the space where kids feel supported where they feel encouraged and they feel safe and uh, about engaging in fractions. So this particular activity, again, is called Something Great About Today. It really provides an opportunity for us to uh, focus on student self-awareness, right? They're reflecting on how they engage their self-management, but as well as modeling appreciation. What do I appreciate about the experience that I had today? Again, I know sometimes it's difficult. We don't make the time for it, even for ourselves, but it gives you a chance to reflect as well. And SEL is not just for our students. It's for us too, right? We all need it. So this particular activity provides space where you get to remind students of what you've engaged in. So for example, we got to... Um, engage in Jamboard and represent um, a fraction in multiple ways. We have the opportunity to watch a video, to think about the learning progressions for fractions. We had an opportunity um, to think about how we might compare fractions, how we might order them. We looked at vocabulary and we were able to use um, the slides and um, be able to you know, move things around and be able to navigate that space. Whatever you found interesting, helpful, joyful, um, supportive, productive, successful for you. This provides a space where you get to reflect on that and name that. So I've named some of the things we got to engage in. I want to give you an opportunity just to reflect for yourself. What was something great about our time together today? And when you have that, I'm going to just ask for you to share it right in the chat. All right, those white for them. So I'm gonna give everybody a little more time. I'll be quiet. All right, so I see multiple things and people like different things really resonated. And so I'm not gonna read them off. I'm gonna give you an opportunity. I wanna invite your voice into the space to talk about what you name, like we can see it, but we wanna hear why. Why did you find that particular activity, um, something that you enjoyed or something you thought was really positive or productive for you? Let's, um, I'll, I'll open it up and allow you to choose. Let's have someone unmute and share. Stephanie Kays, I'll volunteering. All right, beautiful. Thank you, Stephanie. I just really um, like receiving all of the stuff that you need. I know we can print it off, but yeah. with me, I'm a spaz and, you know, I'm going through and then I, or my, my printer will stop working. I print half of it. I forget about the other half. I put it somewhere and it mm -hmm. just, it's a lot for me to do because sure. I'm always doing something else and then I never want to go to the copier and it just it, it doesn't seem like a lot but it it is yeah. and so having that ready and knowing that we have everything we need it's just going to make it a lot easier to work with them love it 
thank you for lifting that, Stephanie. I think Shauna was super intentional about making sure that you had every single thing that you needed. So thank you for naming that. Um, let's get some other voices in the space. Anybody else like to unmute and share? Why did you name that particular item that you did? Therese? I, um, I like just collaborating with the other two teachers in my group. One was, um, had been special ed and then works in middle school. And we talked about the learning gaps that are going on and us all having this struggle around how to do fractions, how to infuse it, what to use. Yes. And then the other, the other teacher was um, special ed and just talked about different ideas and perspectives of how to infuse this in the fall with our current curriculum. Yeah. And then hand gestures, I teach fourth grade and I'll be going up to fifth grade, but I like that for the relay piece. Because I was talking about how we use slate boards and the kids want to write out the entire question and they okay. want to write the entire question and the answer. And I'm like, yeah. dude, this is supposed to be two minutes. I like, <laughs> <laughs> so the hand gestures really coming up because I do that with angles. Oh, you know, obtuse and acute and right. Mm -hmm. And I can see them doing it on the test. But I'm like, oh my God, yes. so pull the hand gestures. It's quick. Yeah. They know them and done. It's great. Right. Time savers. It's a great time saver. And I am so thankful for the digital piece that you put into place because my goodness, the time save there is tremendous. And I can get down to the task of teaching. Yes. Thank you Thank so you. much for naming that. Thank you, Therese, for naming that. We appreciate it. Um, so I want to honor our time, all of our time, and just um, tell you all, thank you so much for sharing what you shared in the chat. Thank you both Stephanie and Therese for um, sharing as well. Um, I think most of you were with us yesterday, so you got to see um, that connecting to home and family. We just want to encourage um, you to lean into this one because it gives kids a chance to talk about home. I want to go back to the one that we were just sharing, um, something great about today. When I say it's not just for the kids, it's for you too. It is for you because you get to hear your kids tell you what you did that supported them today. What you said, what you did, your intentionality in terms of the lesson and structure of the day. You get to hear what they appreciate. And that's important because I know we are all overwhelmed and we think our kids don't appreciate anything half the time. So making this time to be intentional about saying, what, what was something great today? And you can start them off by naming perhaps something that they've contributed, but it really can set the tone for the next interaction. Okay. Thank you. Shauna? Yeah. Um, Eurisha is working on the Padlet to add resources. So if you are interested in learning more about the um, openers and closers, and I would encourage you, Therese, you just mentioned time. Um, don't let this be the thing that you run out of time for. Set a timer, put your most diligent kid on telling you to stop talking so that you can switch gears. Um, these are the moments that I would often skip over because I had to get it all in. And I would keep talking till the bell rang. And early in my career, I was even guilty of saying the bell doesn't dismiss you, I do. So don't be me, um, set the time. Make sure and put the timer on there because we want to value this. These are the kids who go home and say, what did you learn today? Nothing, nothing. We really wanna give the moment so that we know what they are hanging on to. Cause you might've been talking all hour, but this is what you're hanging on to from our time together. So I appreciate um, my own journey in valuing that piece and would really make sure that I set aside the time to do that. And I wanna thank um, Eurisha also for helping me to understand how building in these connections helps with the student learning. It also helps with the student connecting to you and connecting to be ready to learn. So these are well worth the time you're going to invest and the fact that she's made it easy to have these ready-made activities and the Blue's Clues theory of learning tells us that kids are okay doing the same activity over and over as long as they're excited about it. And as long as they can share something new. And it really, it's just about putting aside the time. You don't have to have a new fancy idea to do this every day of the school year. Don't put that pressure on yourself. No one needs to be fancy. 
We just need to have that opportunity. Yes, Therese, I love the nods. You're there with me. So take advantage of the fact that Eurisha is sharing all of these well-planned out routines with us. Um, so we talked a little bit about that fraction knowledge, starting off with that video from Graham and then talking about and experiencing Fraction Face-Off as a student from the digital version. Hopefully you have some ideas about whether you would use the digital or the manual to help with planning those activities as a teacher. And just know that we really both believe that the magic is in how close you are to students. You are making those decisions because you're the educated professional. This is not about the curriculum failing or not failing or you failing. It's about making those choices that make sense in your classroom. So I love that Stephanie's able to say, you know what, not digital all the time. That's not what my kids need. And for other people that will increase engagement. So it's knowing your students well and being able to communicate that content in a way that's memorable. And thinking about small steps for implementation. When we think about Fraction Face-Off, we have all of those parts. You'll notice the color-coded backgrounds. So word problems will always have an orange background. So if you're not doing those, skip those slides. It makes it really easy to do that. Um, we are also connected to the work from intensiveintervention.org, knowing that the interventions we're sharing um, this week and next week are all systematic and explicit. They all make sure that we're honoring vocabulary and looking at concrete, representational, and abstract, where we have hands-on, and then we think about the imagery of the number line, and then we move to the abstract of the fraction. Um, we have fluency. We talked about opportunities to respond. We want lots of opportunities, whether it's verbal or gesture, or just lots of opportunities to practice. Um, effective questioning that is built into that handy dandy giant teaching manual. And then error analysis, where are kids getting lost? And we saw the best example of that when we had the three different activities on the slide where they were first comparing the fractions and then they put them in order and then they put them on a number line. So all three of those were different levels of the same activity. So then we can better understand where our students are at. Um, on the slide deck for today, we do have that hopeful ending better each day because we do wanna think about how we are all getting 1% better. And then making those decisions. How are you going to spend your time, whether it's an intervention or whether it's a class-wide thing that you're going to do as part of your regular instruction through the school year. As you're doing your stipend activities, um, don't fill in the Zoom time. We do that based on the Zoom attendance chart, so you don't have to do that. You're really focused on all the on your own sections. So on your own for the green, you can be in the green or the red parts of Padlet, and I'll go there in just a moment. And then you're also focused on the purple parts of the Padlet. And that's how you're gonna track those on your own hours to make sure you're maximizing your stipend. And when you look at the Padlet, and Eurisha put that link into chat just a moment ago, all of the Oakland Schools resources are in the first column. You've got options on your own for red and green. These are intervention and then SEL and CRT related. And then we do have some videos that got really good feedback last time or last year for fractions with time and money, the misconceptions of fractions, and then well as fractions, decimals, and percents, which is always a hit with our middle school and high school crowd. Um, so we have those options for you so that you're able to get the time. We are coming back together on June 7th, and that will be across all three interventions. And that's a chance for you to ask questions, to talk about how you collect data, and then Yurisha is gonna get us a little bit deeper in with the SEL practices and the culturally responsive teaching so that we can really enhance good instruction all the time and not just save that for intervention. Questions for us. And hopefully you're just excited about having some new resources to use that are student ready. And I know we're not paying you enough, but I really do appreciate you joining us. Um, it's really exciting to hear from teachers in the county and to better understand what you need um, to offer great instruction. So we appreciate that you're willing to share that with us today.